So how fun was it to watch AJ putting this roster together for you guys? Oh man, it was um, it was a blast watching it all happen. Um, you know, especially where the game's at now to uh, be a part of a team that's you know doing whatever they can to go out and win a World Series, to win a World Championship is extremely motivating as a player. Um, you know, as a player, you really feel that there's no excuses but to be ready, but to be ready for this opportunity. I think we all know what's at stake here. We all know what um, you know we're, what's on the table for us, what opportunities we have as a group if we can you know, play to our level. And, um, you know, that's the goal. The goal is to get here, mesh with these guys and uh, just learn our style, learn our level of baseball and, and try and maintain and be consistent at that all year. The, the fun thing now is, you know, after the, the last loss in Texas last year against the Dodgers, we all kind of looked around and and the beauty of it now is I don't have to explain to everybody what it feels like. Everybody felt that pain. Everybody knew what it was like to be on that stage to play in postseason baseball. And at the same time, we realized how close we were to our, our goal at the end of the year was to win a world championship. So the beauty of it now is, um, you know, I don't got to talk about it. Everybody knows what that feeling's like. Everybody's done what they need to do in the offseason to be in shape, to to be ready to go once spring training comes. And, um, you know, now we just got to go out, take care of business and, um, you know, just take care of step one, which is getting through the regular season. and getting back to the playoffs. Um, you know, the older guys, myself, Manny, all these guys, we don't have to explain to the whole team what it's like anymore. We all we all know what it's like. We've all been there. We've all, um, you know, got our hearts broken last year. And uh, everyone, you can tell, is, is ready to go. Everybody's, um, you know, eager for this to start. Um, you know, it's uh, there's very uh, few times a player can honestly say uh, they feel like they have a team that can win a world championship. And I think it's, it's pretty obvious this team is capable of doing that. Now we just got to reach our potential. Yeah, certainly. We know we're not going to sneak up on teams anymore. We know uh, we're going to get everybody's best game, and that's the way it should be. You know, I think uh, we were kind of new to the baseball world last year. I think a lot of people got introduced to, uh, you know, the Padres and what's really going on out here in San Diego. So I think the secret's out. I think everybody knows the type of team we have. I think, um, you know, everybody knows we're an exciting team that can uh, – potentially make some noise. And, um, you know, that's just the main thing. We have to be on top of our game at all times because teams are going to be coming at us and we can't sneak up on anybody anymore. Um, I mean, it's certainly a big deal, but I would say for me, it, it's not as important because, um, you know, I just want to be productive. Uh, you know, misses are misses. And um, there's certainly, uh, you know, certain things that jump out that you recognize adjustments need to be made. And, um, you know, for me personally, I'm more of a field type guy. So, if I'm in the cage working on stuff and doing the adjustments and feeling my way through that, then, um, you know, I'm confident that the result will get better that I want to, to clean up or, um, you know, whatever result that is that I want to clean up will get better. So, um, you know, I understand I made some some pretty good uh, adjustments when it comes to that stuff. And there's also a lot of adjustments that I can still be a lot better on. So, um, you know, just trying to tighten my game up every way possible. Eric, at the press conference a couple of days ago, A.J. Preller said that his special assistant, Eric Hosmer and Ian Kinsler, told him day one a couple of years ago that you, that Tatis needs to be with the Padres. Did you envision at that moment to start the season that he would end up having the sort of contract, statue contract that he has right now? Uh, well, I told A.J. two years before that that Tatis should have been in the big league, so I'm glad he finally listened a couple of years later. But uh <laughs> He um, no, it's 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 uh, you know it's obvious. Fernando is is the player he is, but I think one of the things that we all noticed was was his makeup off the field, his intensity in his work, and how much of a, a student of the game he was. And you know, there's plenty of players that you see that have the talent that you know you know that they can uh, you know have the talent and makeup of a big league player, but you just don't see the mental side that advanced at that age. And I think that was the biggest thing that we recognized and we just wanted to let AJ know was, you know, I know you've seen talent and uh, maybe not talent like his, but you've seen guys close to that. But the mental part is, is, is right up there with the talent. So there's no reason this kid shouldn't be in the big leagues. And, um, you know, that goes back to what we said originally. It's, it's, it's fun to play for a GM and an owner that, that want to win and do whatever they can to win. And I think that's a big reason right there and, uh, and proving that, you know, the front office is going to do whatever we can to win. You know, in so much of the Padres' identity the last season was about Slam Diego and the firepower of the offense. What does it mean for you to have potentially three number one aces in this rotation with the addition of you Darvish and Blake Snell to what you already have? Uh, it means a lot. These guys are, 
uh, proven guys. These guys are guys that have been frontline starters in this league for a couple of years now. So um, definitely love those guys on our side. But as an offense, um, you know, we have to keep that same mentality and, uh, you know, basically under, understand that we got to go produce runs no matter what we can. And, um, you know, we got some guys that are capable of winning Cy Young's on the mound for us. But, uh, you know, I feel like as an offense, we can't really – uh, fall into that trap and we have to stay aggressive with us and you know we talked about last year as an offense um, you know understanding we've been finishing in the bottom part of uh, pretty much every offensive number the past couple of years and we just wanted to get to the top half of that and you know I think we were a top five offense pretty much for most of the year last year so it's a tremendous jump for our offense but you know we want to keep improving and we feel that we can be a top three top two offense in the league so we want to keep making improvements. Lessig, was there any was there any wow moment for you of this offseason? I know with, with AJ Pablo, you've kind of gotten used to it, just nonstop movement, but was there anything that just kind of jumped out at you after it happened? Uh, I mean, definitely getting Blake and you at the same time was uh, was a wow factor. Um, you know, I couldn't remember who got announced first, but it's like, man, we just got this guy, and then all of a sudden you had another Cy Young type of guy right behind it, and uh, I forget what day that was, but that was a pretty good night to be a Padre. Thank you. Uh, the fans make this game, you know, the fans, it's 162 games throughout the course of the year. And there's times where you certainly feel sluggish and, you know, you walk outside and, uh, you know, you see all the people in the stands, you feel the energy and it immediately uplifts you. And, uh, you know, you just feel that intensity and you feel that energy burst and it kind of gets you back on track. So it'll be nice to uh, get to play in front of a crowd again. And uh, so much excitement in San Diego last year on on how the team was playing and, um, you know, what we were doing on the field. So uh, we know the fans are excited to get out there and watch us, and we're just as excited to get out there and uh, play in front of these fans. You know, that was something that was talked about a lot last year was how electric Petco Park would be when uh, or if there was fans last year during the course of the Slam Diego run, the winning streaks, and uh, the playoff bursts and all that stuff. So I think if there's any team that's excited to see some fans, it's, it's definitely us. What in particular – is does you Darvish particularly bring to this uh, starting rotation? And have you been around him, interacted with him, saw him work in these recent days yet? Um, I've got to see one of his bullpens on the fly, but um, just from facing him in the past, I mean, I, I personally think you has some of the best stuff in the game. Uh, the way he can spin a baseball is to me second to none. I think, uh, you know, he's got so much great control with his spin as well that um, you know, I think just by guys, especially the pitchers being around him, seeing him work, seeing how intense he is at his work, um, you know, I think that can do nothing but benefit for the guys. And, um, you know, like I said, I think uh, coming off a year like he had last year, uh, I know he's, you know, been to the World Series and, uh, you know, fell short. So I know he's just as motivated as all of us to get back there and, uh, you know, get over that hump. You know, I think we all made an a point to, uh, to hold each other accountable, to to understand that if we can get our play discipline better, better it's going to make us a better offense collectively. And, you know, we had a goal and we had a mindset each day. And whatever that approach was, we were going to stick to it. And if we saw somebody getting away from that approach or getting away from that a little bit, then, you know, we wanted to hold each other accountable as a team, as an offense. And I think we all did a really good job of that. And, um, you know, like we were saying before, we knew we had finished in the bottom half of the offensive numbers in years past. And, um, we wanted to be realistic with our expectations and we weren't saying we wanted to be the best offense in the league, but we wanted to get up to the uh, you know top part of that list. And I think now when you look at uh, the strides we made last year coming into this year, if we continue that same approach that there's no reason why our offense uh, you know shouldn't set goals on being the best offense in the league. You know, to me, I think uh, what helps with that so much is the leadership that we got in the clubhouse. You know, when when you're coming over to a new place and um, you know, the first guy that jumps at you at your locker is, is a guy like Manny saying what's up and making you feel comfortable. I think that really just sets the tone from that point on and uh, seeing how he interacts with everybody, seeing how everybody interacts with everybody around here. You can just see the atmosphere. You can see everybody wants to get better. Everybody wants to have a good time, but at the same time, take their work uh, serious out there and, and make strides every day. So it's just a common goal between all these guys that um, want to get better individually to help their team win a championship. And you've been around Will for a few years now, obviously had a big season last year. What did you notice differently about him that maybe lent itself to the type of success he had? Um, yeah, I don't know. Will's, um, 
Will had a great year, but, uh, you know, honestly, to me, Will didn't change much. Uh, you know, same guy, confident around the clubhouse, great teammate. Um, you know, obviously his, his production last year was, was elite. It was, um, you know, it's something I talked to Kev about earlier. I think, you know, he got a, a couple, you know, top 10 MVP votes, but I mean, I think the year that he had last year, it went unnoticed because, uh, you know, obviously we got Manny and Toddy doing their thing and having great years, but I mean, Will had a great year last year that not enough people talk about. And, um, you know, especially kind of where he was at the beginning of spring to where he was at the end of the year. It was just tremendous to see that for him. And, uh, you know, Will came to play every day last year. Eric, how much uh, are you looking forward to Bobby Dickerson as third base coach? What do you think that's going to be like? Oh, man, ever since he got this coach of the year, I think it's went straight to his head. I don't know if he's going to be able to bounce back from this. Uh, Bobby's great, man. Bobby brings so much energy out there, especially early in the morning here in spring training. And, uh, you know, you're going through some defensive fundamentals, which, um, you know, he makes it exciting. It can be, uh, you know, a lot of guys want to get a B want to get to BP or want to get to hitting, but he makes defense exciting. He makes the atmosphere. He makes the vibe out there uh, fun to be out there. And, um, you know, I've never really seen a, uh, a coach on the defensive side make such an impact uh whether it's outfield, infield, whatever it is. And he's been doing a great job of that. And, um, you know, it's fun to uh, to see him back to normal. And, uh, you know, his energy is – it uh, it spreads throughout the, the fields, that's for sure. Eric, you faced Joe Musgrove a decent amount in the past. You faced him again today in, in live. What what makes his breaking pitches so good? And what did you, what did you see from him today? Yeah, his um, – you know, his, his breaking ball, he can, he can really control where he wants it. Um, you know, I feel like he throws a couple different types of it too, which is obviously hard as a hitter because, uh, you know, once you see a guy's breaking ball once or twice, you, you have a good idea of how much it breaks and where you want it to start and all that type of stuff. And, um, you know, it seemed like he threw me about three or four different ones today that started in different places, moved different ways. And, um, the biggest thing with Joe that I love is his mentality. Uh, you know, when he's on that mound, it doesn't matter if it's a live batting practice or, it's a, a playoff game. It just seems like he treats it the same way. And, um, you know, I think that's the, the biggest thing that uh, excites me is, is seeing that mentality. And, um, you know, when you see a guy like that on the mound, you want to make all the plays for him defensively. And uh, that's the type of teammate you want.